OK, here's a question. Are the fractions negative 3 fifths and 3 negative fifths and the negative of 3 fifths, are those three quantities actually the same fraction in disguise? Or are they different? Now, if I try to use my intuition of a model like pi's per student, uh, what will I be drawing here? Well, it gets kind of weird and quirky. Uh, first one, negative 3 fifths. That's negative 3 pi's for 5 actual students. So I want 3 anti pi's. So the first fraction is representing 3 anti pi's for 5 actual students. Here they are, 5 actual students. And I've got 3 anti pi's to be shared equally among them. The second fraction. This time I've got 3 actual pi's. 3 actual pi's to be shared equally among. What, five anti-students? I have no idea what that means, but let me draw some of these ghostly figures for the anti-students. There is the opposite of a student. There's the second anti-student. Here's the third anti-student. Fourth opposite of a student. Here's the opposite of five students. So that's sharing three actual pies amongst five anti-students. Ooh, it's very different. And I'm not even sure I know what it means in the first place. But there's a third one. This is the opposite of three fifths. It's the anti of three fifths. So I want, um, I guess I need to draw an anti pi, and I want three fifths of that anti pi. That would be negative three fifths. So there's my anti pi divided by fifths. So I guess the third fraction is representing that. So now, uh, if I'm trying to do my pies per student model, I'm trying to compare this with this with this, and I don't really know what any of that means. My intuition has broken down. In fact, as I said earlier on in these videos, no one model can speak the absolute truth all the way through, and I can see my pies per student model is now really failing me now. It's really falling down. What we have to rely on, in the end, no model's going to speak the complete truth. We have to rely on what we choose to believe about the mechanics of fractions, which is this. So to really answer this question, don't rely on the models, I have to rely on the mathematics we established. So, are these three fractions the same by a logical consequence of this mathematics? And I bet the answer is yes. I know we've been taught that they're probably all the same. Let's now show that it really is. Alright, great, let's do it. So. Um, obviously, I'm going to be using the mechanics of negative numbers as well. Now, in my video about all the rules of arithmetic, I didn't actually go through the consequences of negative numbers. There's a lot involved there, and you have to see some of my other work on the mechanics of negative numbers. But there are things we believe that I'll use right now, and hopefully they're familiar to you nonetheless. Let me start with the first fraction. Negative 3 and 5. Negative 3 fifths. I want to see if I can somehow make that look like one of these other ones. And my favorite fraction of belief is that I can choose to multiply the top and bottom by whatever I like, and that won't change the fraction, won't change the quantity. Now, I'm going to push this rule to the max. Remember, we said we like these rules to hold no matter what. So I'm going to choose a very strange choice for the top and bottom I'm going to scale by. I'm going to scale the top by negative 1 and the bottom by negative 1. So if I believe that rule holds no matter what, then I believe that's still the same quantity. So that means the top line is negative 3 times negative 1. Negative times negative. One of the consequences, which I didn't go through in my earlier video, of mechanics and negative numbers, that negative times negative just has to be logically, by pure, pure, pure logic, from those axioms, positive. This must be positive 3 on the top. 5 times negative 1. Another consequence of that, uh, those axioms is that a positive times a negative must actually be negative. This will be negative 5 times 1, negative 5. So this quantity is actually the same as 3 on the top, negative 5 on the bottom, which is that second fraction. There it is. Yes, those two are actually indeed the same quantity in disguise by belief number 4. All right, so now my challenge is, can I get this one to equal one of those? Negative 3 fifths. Can I do some mathematics on that one? Why? Yes, I can. Negative 3 fifths. All right, so again, one of the consequences of basic mechanics of negative numbers, which I didn't go through in that earlier video, is this. A negative number is really the same as negative 1 times the positive version of that number. All right. Okay, well, well I look at that and think, Oh, it looks like this one. Something times a fraction is just means adjust the numerator appropriately. So let me do that. Uh, this must be just adjust the numerator, negative 1 times 3, negative 1 times 3, leave the denominator alone. Bingo. Negative 1 times 3 is actually negative 3 on the top and 5 on the bottom, which is the first one. This third one actually equals this first one, and the first one equals the second one. All three are actually equal. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. There it is as a logical consequence of our belief of fractions. So we've just established, I want to write it very generally, 
that negative a over b is actually the same as a over negative b, which is the same as negative a over b. People often just put out minus signs as though it's just obvious and natural one can. Actually, I guess we've just now proven that one really can do that, but it's not actually natural and obvious. But now we know it's true for sure. So I guess we can go ahead and now do that for sure.